Hey friends, let's get kinky. That's right. Oh my god, look at this hard boiled egg. It's like the raunchiest thing on the internet. Huh? Oh, oh, I I'm banned from FA. Weird. All right, all right. Before I get the angry mob of pure tings fired up again, I'm gonna tone it back. But we are going to talk about kink. Kink, it's not a four letter word, and that's a good thing. Well, I mean, Technically, it is a four-letter word. But you get my point. You don't have to whisper, I like maid dresses in polite company anymore. This isn't the 1800s, folks. Or if it is. Oh my god, cover your ankle, Harley. How dare you? I swear, some of the furries I've seen online really are on that level. So I believe it's important to unpack some of the things. Educate all us weirdos so we know how to push back against this misinformation. The fact of the matter is, the kink doesn't even have to be sexual at all. And sometimes, all it takes is a leather mask and some fancy underwear to prevent being othered by giant corporations. Y'all ready? <laughs> Let's start with the easy part. What the hell is kink anyways? Did I say the easy part? What I actually meant is that it is subjective as hell and full of contradicting definitions with tons of arguing experts on the subject matter. It's kind of just like trying to decipher F.A.'s content policies. Kink is blurry, opinion-based, and can get you banned for no reason, so yay. But in all seriousness, kink just means not all that normal. And what that means, <laughs> it varies widely. Slapping your partner's butt probably doesn't qualify as kinky to you, but for some people, oh my god, that's too spicy for television. If you've spent any amount of time on Twitter, well, first off, please, for the love of God, switch to Blue Sky. It's way better. But second off, you know what I'm talking about. There, you can find furries voicing their opinions loudly. They make block lists and take to every platform they can to make sure that we all know they don't like kinky things. Or rather, they want to decide what is and isn't kinky. And they want everyone to praise them, of course, for purifying the fandom. But here's the thing. Kinks, they're all subjective and exist on a sliding scale. Now, generally speaking, there, there is, of course, a line. You could probably spot kink when you see it, right? Most people would agree that Fifty Shades of Grey depicts kink. I mean, it depicts it poorly, really poorly, but you get my point. Also, if you're curious about BDSM, please, for the love of God, don't use a Twilight fanfic as your guide. I do think, though, that we can all agree that being handcuffed to bed while a leather-clad dommy mommy teases you with a riding crop is totally kinky. Kink is not necessarily about sex, though. You might think it is, and that's okay, because a lot of media confuses kink with fetish. Now, I don't expect everyone here to be an expert on the topic of abnormal social behavior. That's why I'm here, clearing the air and educating all of y'all. Kink and fetish, well, they're different. What is a fetish? Well, a fetish is absolutely sexual, and actually has a pretty solid definition. Sexual fetishism is a sexual fixation on a non-living object or body part. The object of interest is called the fetish. The person who has a fetish for that object is called a fetishist. Before its more modern definition, the word fetish originated from totem worship. A fetish was an object of great spiritual significance, usually a small figure or talisman that is believed to have mystical powers. It comes from the French word fetiche. I think I said that right? Anyways, enough etymology. It means spell, like magic spell, as in this object can cast magic. Then the Victorians came along, and wouldn't you know it, they start casting all these spells on all kinds of private areas. And voila, a sexual fetish is born. That's actually not what happened. But you can thank Alfred Bernay, the kinky bastard who pioneered the study of sexual fetishes in the late 1800s. The major difference between a kink and a fetish is that a fetish is often necessary for arousing. Someone that likes to get kinky with a fursuit head on doesn't need the suit. It's just a nice little bit of extra spice, like a skosh of red pepper flakes on top of your pizza, but for intimate times. Someone with a fursuit fetish, though, they need the fur, or the fun won't start. In extreme cases, having a sexual fetish can rise to the level of a psychological disorder. Modern psychology is generally pretty cool with fetishes, by the way, as long as they don't hurt anyone. But if you can't have a healthy relationship with someone because your fetish is impending your ability to make connections, a psychologist might suggest cognitive behavioral therapy, meaning you might get prescribed CBT for your obsession with CBT. You can look that one up on your own time, or maybe, maybe don't do that. 
If you know, you know, okay? Like, just just don't look it up, okay? Uh, okay, okay. But wait, what the heck is kink again? It sounds so... sexual. Oftentimes, kink is sexual. That's why Fifty Shades of Grey isn't considered a children's book, right? Oh my god, can you imagine that as a children's story? Are you ready, class? Are you ready? And then Christian Grey picked up the leather whip. See the leather whip, everyone? Look! Look at the leather whip. It's like a jump rope, but for grown-ups. Now remember, kids, sharing is caring unless it's the safe word. That was cursed. We live in a world where our understanding of sexuality is constantly evolving, where we can have these open conversations about what is, frankly, an innate human experience. I would also like to point out that there are plenty of asexual people who find fulfillment through kink in a completely non-sexual way. Not that you have to be asexual to find kinks fulfilling in that way. I'm just making a point here. Kink does not equal sex. It's kind of like learning the ABCs, from ABDL to pop play to good old-fashioned BDSM. Kink is whatever you choose to make of it. Some people are kinky just for comfort. Some people find something more healing in the kink community. Asexual blogger The Barefoot Backpacker talks at great length about how being tied up is actually relaxing and therapeutic. You don't have to worry about anything, because guess what? What are you going to do? You're tied up. You can't go work on that report or answer the phone. Literally. And that's not a unique experience. I've been talking to pups who use role-playing as a dog to cope with stress. No private parts involved. I recently talked to some baby furs, and one of the things that they stressed to me was that for so many of them, sex isn't involved. It's just a way to escape this shit reality for a few minutes and be a kid again. Hell, I even spoke with a person who used BDSM as a way to work through their deeply held personal trauma. I mean, honestly, what is a session in a dungeon but a psychologist visit with better vibes? Picture this. You come home from work, tired and worn out. But what awaits you is a rope laid out nicely on your satin coveries. As you're tied to that firm mattress, you're forced to be vulnerable. Everything is on display. And you've got someone you trust completely there to guide you on your journey. While listening to you and being attentive. I'll say it now. In some ways, that's better than therapy. A therapist doesn't provide aftercare when you shout red, although they, they should. Here's the thing, kink isn't necessarily sexual, and even when it is, that sexuality is entirely subjective. So why are people trained to police kink? That's a really good question. I've certainly been on the receiving end of multiple keyboard crusades against kink, and the reasoning is almost always, almost always the same thing. The children, think about the children, oh. Will they be hurt if we allow this indecency to continue? That was my best impersonation of a church lady. Now, I'm not going to waste my time arguing with folks trying to start a moral panic. That's a subject for a whole nother video that I'm sure everyone here will be totally normal about. But what I am here to do is to point out that the think about the children defense in furry, well, it's probably the worst argument you can make. First off, furries are very well aware of how the outside world perceives them. They understand it explicitly thanks to years of exploitational media. Honestly, that's what makes me so qualified to talk about this subject in the first place. I've spent the past 10 years documenting niche communities like this. What is indecent changes constantly. Has no real rules. Go to a fursuit parade. You might see bulging underwear, huge tracks of land, harnesses, maid outfits, and so much more. It's a veritable feast for the eyes. Everything you never wanted to see on display. Unless you did, of course. But hey, I'm not judging. Sometimes there's even pup hoods. I said the word, pup hoods. Kink is important for another reason. Not only do lots of people benefit from being themselves, sexual or otherwise, the weird, kinky stuff is actually what keeps large corporations from ruining our spaces. Once they take hold, they won't stop at one kink. They'll let Puritan sterilized ideas rule the day. Advertisers don't like being pictured next to freaks that scare the normies away. But I do. I mean, look at me! Well, you might not care if diapers or eggs get banned. You might care when maid outfits are deemed sexual. Or harnesses. Or whatever you degenerates are into. I see you! I see you there! Kink is subjective. You want to know what people in the 1950s thought was super kinky? Gay sex. Hey everyone, let's ban gay sex from furry cons so that Walmart is happy. Oh, oh, no, God, well, yeah, let's see how well that goes over. Then why are there so many furries who are, let's be honest, only voicing opinions online? So against anything they consider kinky. Well, as you might have guessed by now, 
I have a theory. My theory is that we as a community are far more judgmental of ourselves, far more aware of our own ideas. In a sense, we're too empathetic to the goings-ons behind closed doors. Let's step out from that perspective for a moment and objectively observe. If a child sees a person in a harness and all of their dog mask, they see someone playing the character of a dog, the former like they saw in that cool Lion King Broadway show. A fursuiter in a diaper is just like Tom and Jerry or the Rugrats, and they've seen way more revealing things on billboards advertising hamburgers. We as adults, we know too much. Trust me. Sometimes I wish I didn't know that much. We all know that that pup could be playing the role of a sub in a BDSM scene. We all know that that fursuiter wearing boxers could be hiding something underneath them. We all know that someone might have had to clean lube off that inflatable suit before they started to walk out into the parade. And for the Puritans among us, that assumption becomes fact, when in actuality, it's simply a what if. I think we can all agree that you shouldn't be flaunting your sexual acts in public. But maybe we can also agree that this puritanical point of view about what people choose to wear isn't fact. But sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. When we remember the kink doesn't equate to sex and recognize the personal tastes are subjective, we open the doors for everyone to feel welcome in the fandom, whether they're into these things or not. Because kink is not a four-letter word. It's a manifestation of self-expression, something that we all do in our own unique weird way. Instead of fearing what we don't understand, let's celebrate our differences as a community. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, share it if you found it informative, and drop me a comment in the comment section below with your thoughts. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to help me continue creating educational content like this, please consider popping over to my Patreon and supporting it. There are lots of cool perks like your name in the credits and so much more. Lots of love, friends. Bye!